It's a damnation of society's creation of a man with a heart of stone It's just the expected, he loves being rejected and now he's all alone And thanks for contacting Bick and Hole Radio. We are on the air right now, but please leave a message with your name and number and we'll call you back. Hey, yeah, my name's Gary, and I'm pissed off. Do you actually think some loser moaning about his life is entertainment? It is not. You must be out of your fucking mind, stare this shit. Everyone has fucking depression. He ain't the only bastard. He needs to grow the fuck up, and I tell you this, I'll not be turning in again until this horse shakes off the air. Do you hear me? Toss us! Hi, my name's Laura from Bick Hampstead Village. I listen to your show every evening, and I was blown away by your caller Dave last night. I just wanted to commend you, really, as a station for reaching out to him. What he said about his family life and his depression is awful, and I'm sure there's more. You've given him that platform and outlet to release these demons. My partner Paul has depression and he would never do what Dave has done. But he was listening to it. I'd hate for him to ever feel like Dave and not be able to talk to me about it. You've opened up a lot of people's eyes. Well done and keep up the good work, guys. This is Bick and Hole Radio News, news for locals with me, Barbara Dish. Local children have been evacuated from Hole High School this morning following an outbreak of herpes that is thought to have been brought into the school by a careless student teacher. This particular strain of herpes, contracted through sport contacts such as rugby, is otherwise known as scrum pox and is highly contagious and could mean the school is closed for at least a month. I caught up with the head of Hull High School, Mr John Edwards, earlier today and asked him if he'd been rubbing up against any men recently. Sorry, what? Please leave, you're a f***ing menace. F***ing go! Parents are said to be outraged at the proposed closure, having already endured another earlier this year, fraught with yet more scandal. In February, emergency services were called to what locals reported to be a raucous rave being held in the school grounds after home time. PCs Henry Black and Malcolm White from Bickenhole Constabulary recall the moment they found disgraced dinner lady Tracy Hart in what they describe as a pink custard-induced coma, whilst several teachers indulged in extracurricular activities. The accused, and dubbed White Board Orgy 6, were suspended after all three teachers fell pregnant and all applied for maternity leave simultaneously, causing huge staffing problems. Food tech teacher Miss Anita Dick, 47, sociology teacher Miss Lucanus, 23, and foreign languages teacher Miss Olivia Klausoff, all deny charges of sexual misconduct and have dropped their accusations against the head, who is rumoured to be involved. It seems the head was worth it then. Over to our floozy with the newsy, Lucy Nossett. Lucy. Thank you, Barbara. You join me live at the very heart of our community, the Obelisk Shopping Centre, where I've been speaking with a number of locals this afternoon about our very own presenters, Rosie Barfield and producer Neil Folding host of the popular evening show, The Greenhouse. They find themselves in a bit of a pickle this afternoon, as hordes of angry locals tells me that during last night's show, a caller named Dave, who has been featured heavily this week, has, from what some are saying, had a counselling session live on air. Rachel Scrag, a local, says she is furious at the presenters for changing their much-loved format. Whilst another local listener, Craig Elson, tells me he's been feeling the same and it has encouraged him to seek help this very morning. Whether you agree or disagree with what our very own dynamic duo have done, it has certainly raised a few questions. We'll have a statement from Bick and Hole Radio's owner later. Speak to you 
Barbara. Fuck my life. Shit, hello? Rosie Barfield? Hi. Hi, Declan. Yeah, I- I've just heard, yeah. OK, sure. This afternoon? Yeah, will I have the show at uh, 8 anyway? Now? Yeah? Neil? I'm not sure now. Yeah, I'll see if I can grab him. OK. Cheers. Fuckity, fuck, shitbags, fuck! Hello? Have you had a call? From the office? <sighs> Did you hear the news? No, the actual news? Well, not it's knocking around and apparently the whole town is pissed. They want our fucking heads. For helping Dave? Now fucking Eveson is pissed. He is? He just called me. You don't know that. He never calls. He's pissed. Anyway, five o'clock at the station, he wants a meeting. You too. Look, I have to go to the police station, don't I? Yeah, all right. Bye. Ah, the man I wanted to see, Mr. Folding, take a seat. Your um, counterpart not with you? The Kane to your Abel, the uh, Willoughby to your Schofield? Uh, she's on her way. I'm surprised she's not here yet, actually. Uh, she's full of surprises. As it seems are you, partly the reason I asked to see you both. Yes, Rosie had explained a little. Did she? That's good of her. Well, as it seems we may be waiting for some time for her, I'll begin. Oh, I'll call her. It's it's no problem. I have a tight schedule to keep, Neil. I hadn't factored in this meeting today and I have a million and one other things to be getting on with. Shall I start? Sorry, Declan. Sorry. Please be seated, Miss Barfield. As you're both here now, I'll make a start. Now, you two are audio legends. Gods amongst the pantheons! Bick and Hole Radio Royalty! Your listeners love you, and for that, we love you. Because we love you, our sponsors love you. And when our sponsors love you, you are kept in a job. That's the way it works, my friends. Your listeners, your people, hold everything in its place. Rosie, who is Pol Pot? The guy you want, Britain's got talent. Neil, who is Pol Pot? Um, the Cambodian Prime Minister who was responsible for the death of a million of his own people, I think. It was 1.7 million, nearly 2 million, but well done, yeah. You could say he was making a killing. What stopped him, anyone? He was overthrown. Yes, denounced. By who, do you know? His own followers. Precisely. Hitler, Salazar, Mubarak, Gaddafi, Hussein, once at the top of the pile, all toppled by their own people. Look, if this is to do with last night's show, I can explain. You think my station and my shows need explaining to me? I think what she's trying to say is that we had the duty to help this guy. He came to us, he contacted the show himself. As you must have heard, you would know that he said he's desperately low right now. Low? The only thing that's low from where I stand is the standard of your show and the ratings that follow. People around here aren't interested in poor, poor me. They're interested in poor, poor me another. Well, do people not matter then? Those who actually need us. Would you rather us blot out the desperate, the sick, the helpless, in favour of the absurd and the downright balmy? Your show was built on the foundations of balmy, boy. That's what we pay you to do. That's what the people want. You pay us to provide a service to the local community, and we have done that. Dave is a member of that community, is he not? I'm disappointed in your stance on this, Neil. Coming from national radio as you do, you must know how this works. Well, I'm proud of my career, and I am proud of this show. What it was, and what it is. And presumably what it will be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Excellent. So... You help this guy. Call us protest, which they're doing, and switch off, which they're also doing. And the show fails. And because he hasn't got an audience, he kills himself. You're to blame. Isn't that manslaughter? That is ridiculous. 
So we can't help him now because he's at risk. Do not underestimate people and what they're capable of. <coughs> or expect anything from anyone. Look at all that Jeremy Kyle shit. He started off like you guys on radio. A call-in format radio show like yours. A slippery, slippery slope. I knew he would. I told him he would on the golf course. He licked his golf balls clean as I spoke to him. And what happens? Somebody decides to kill themselves because they feel used and violated. The same goes for that Love Island tribe. Well, those shows don't help anyone. Ours will. That's not what the people think. They're calling for us to ITV, your ass. Sack ya. We have a contract. I am fully aware. That's why you're here. Fortunately for you, this is not ITV. But I am not fucking around, and I will not lose listeners for the sake of your activism, socialism, cultural Marxism, whatever the fuck your agenda is. If this guy tops himself, it's completely on you. I'll make sure of that. I'll do anything to protect this station. So you'd do well to go and get him some proper help. Rosie, you find a doctor, tell him to come on the show tomorrow. Neil, douse the flames, hold back the resistance, tell them it's temporary. You have 24 hours. And then? You nip this in the bud by week's end, or you're gone. You are a monster. I have every right. Right or wrong, this is the way it is. We're not going to have enough time. Doctors are busy people. You have this evening. We have our show. No, you don't. I'm sorry, but the sponsors wanted you gone. I met them halfway, so it's suspension for this evening. Desmond Johnny will be taking your slot. I suggest you sort this out. And fast. I'm not having this. This is all wrong. Tell it to the boss. Oh wait! I'm the boss! So suck it. Rosie, wait up! Rosie! Wait up! I don't want to be anywhere near him or this place right now. Look, I know. What did they say at the police station? What? Oh. The usual crap. That's not important now, though, is it? Really? Don't you fucking start. Look, I'm not starting. I thought you handled that in there brilliantly. What are we going to do? This is all too much. It's totally unfair. I was this close to booting off then. I know, but you didn't. I mean, the old Rosie would have. Old Rosie? And what of the new Rosie? Well, right now, she'll take her friends by the arm, then they'll walk out of here with pride and find themselves a questionably stained seat in the pub where they shall sit, have a drink, and work this all out. Okay? Which pub? The Popeye's Arms. It's your round. <laughs> Come on. Fucking dead in here, isn't it? No, this is everyone. Oh, well, nearly everyone. He didn't want to save us, did he? Look at him, polishing that glass and look at me dead in the eye. Hey, don't look at him. He'll eat us alive. Why did we come in here? Oh, because I thought we'd be safer in a place like this. Christ, if this is safer, then what's waiting for us out there? Are we going to discuss what happened today? We know what happened today. We got Bollock for helping out a caller. We need to find him immediate help before he tops himself. His life is in our hands and I don't even fucking like people. That's what Eveson would have you believe. But it's not, is it? We still have the power here. He could have axed us there and then, but he admits that Dave needs further help and where to find it. By tomorrow, yes, but we will. I'm sure of it. But then what? Well, then we go back to how it was. You don't want that, though, do you? <sighs> no, this week's been so unbelievable, and it's only Wednesday. I was not prepared for this. I thought... On Monday, I knew who I was and what I was doing. But I don't think I do. You now, listening to Dave this week and, and seeing how others have treated him, treated us, is... 
is not what I signed up for. You know, maybe the world is a different place now than what it was when I started doing all this, and not for the better either. Can I actually continue to provide a public service to those who want to lynch me for wanting to help someone? Is that really where we are as a society? I just don't think I can anymore. I think we've both been thrown under the bus here, mate. I don't say it often. Well, not at all, but... Is it you've always said the right things at the right time. And now you're saying all of this? You lost your love for the show. I should be mad at you. Because this is my career. On Monday, I didn't give a shit about what people thought about me. I didn't care about a guy who had tweeted in saying he needed help, did I? I have only ever been disgusted with myself once before. And today, I feel it again. I don't think I'm the same person that I was on Monday. And it's fucking frightening. I'm scared. I don't think I've ever ever said that before, out loud. But you know what? Fuck it. Yeah, I get that. You know, I've, I've beaten myself up a lot for not knowing or perhaps not wanting to know the reason I'm here. You know, it is frightening when you finally wake up and see through all the bullshit for the first time. It's scary how much you miss. Now, I think we've had an easy run with this. If this is the end, I mean, let's face it, we've sat on our backsides getting paid a decent wage, and what do we do? We mock, belittle, and sensationalise those around us for our own entertainment and theirs. It's ironic that only now they're offended. It's so hard sometimes, isn't it? to keep going and keep doing the right thing, the decent thing when everyone's telling you you're wrong. I thought I was a campaigner for free speech. I still am, if it's fundamentally right. Um, thank you. Oh, uh, sorry, we didn't order these. Still not talking to us then, I see. Do you think it's cyanide? <laughs> More likely to be rehypnol from him. It's not rehypnol. No, wait there. I'll go check. Be careful. Uh, hi, um, these drinks, we didn't order these. No shit. I'm sorry, I'm not drinking them if you won't tell me where they came from. So, you do have some sense. I I'll leave them, thanks. They're from that guy, Santa Corda, if you must know. Detective. The guy in the black coat? Does he know me? Did he say anything to you? I should imagine everyone knows about you and your friend. He's not been coming here long. It's quiet though. That suits me. Okay. Thanks. Before you go, your friend, the Doxy, is she uh, attached? Ah, yeah. Yes, sorry, I'm... I'm her boyfriend. You? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell him to come and find you first, then. Sorry, what? Just pop into the box. When all is lost, I will find you. Specialising in acceptance and commitment therapy. Contact me today. Councillor Joyce Logan of Think Hull Hospital. I like to tap that up. Oh, thank God. Sit. What's going on? Is there something you're not telling me? What about? Well, the landlord, he says you two have a mutual friend. I think it's that guy sat over there. Do you know him? Black coat? No. I wish I did, though. 
He looks all right. Rosie, please be serious. Do you know him? Think. Think. Yes. Look at what I just found in the Carsey. Oh, shit, he's looking over. Don't look. See, look. Look. He's talking to the landlord. Oh, he's leaving. Oh. Is there a back door to this place? What's gone into you? Oh, we have got to go. Oh, my stomach is in knots. You know I have a sixth sense for this stuff. I'm not going anywhere until I've finished my Kahlua. Oh, he's going to be waiting outside for me, I know it. Oh, shit. Nice chap. Just told me some interesting things about you two. I didn't believe him, though. It smells a bit like bullshit to me. Anyway, the beers were to say thank you, apparently. You did him a favour or some shit. He told me to give you this. What? What's it say? It's a phone number. I knew he liked me. Oh, Rosie, please. Look, there's something on the back. Dave! Dave! If you've been affected by any issues raised in this episode, or if you're finding it hard to cope, please don't suffer in silence. We know how difficult it can be, and sometimes how impossible it seems to open up and talk. But by doing so, you could find the help you need, and it could save your life. Please research local advice hubs, community groups, and NHS initiatives in your area that will listen, advise, and support you through whatever you're going through. Alternatively, reach out to us directly. Contact us through social media and get involved with the hashtag We Are All Dave to share your story. You have been listening to Fenella Fudge, Claudia Greer, Alan Lear, Curtis Ledcham, Nadia Lee, Richard Oliver, James Phillips, Michael Prosper, Hannah Thompson, Ashley Tyler and David Tyson. Fifty Shades of Dave was written and produced by David Lee and recorded at Material Studios Liverpool and has been made possible with the help from the Martin Gallia Project and Involve Northwest. Thank you for listening.